Welcome back to the arena. Hope everybody's been having a great day. Um, thanks so much for stopping by my channel. If you are new here, um, thank you for being here. And if you end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. I really do appreciate you. And I do also wanna give a special shout out here to my members. Thank you guys so much again for supporting me. If you'd like to become a member, uh, you can do so for as little as $1.99 a month. And let's take a look here at this deck that I've been putting together um, for Ladder. So it's the first day here of the new season and really excited to sort of get into this Lesnia Rabbit stack. Um, I saw a list kind of floating around and then looked at a couple other lists and ended up kind of shaving a couple things, making a couple changes. And this is sort of what I settled on. I've been really enjoying it so far. It's a very aggressive strategy deck. Basically, you're making a bunch of tokens. You're getting in with really powerful um, rabbit creatures, which grow to pretty ridiculous sizes for some of the creatures. And then you're just getting into the end zone and uh, closing it out as quickly as you can. So basics of the deck, we have 22 land, um, 31 creatures, and then seven spells. And th four of those spells are going to create creatures in themselves. But for our one drops, we have four copies of Valley Might Caller. That's a frog warrior for one green mana. That is a 1-1 one, one trample. And then whenever another frog, rabbit, raccoon, or squirrel you control enters, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature on Valley Might Caller. So this grows pretty quickly. Um, since everything else is either going to be rabbits, um, you know, and help uh, pump this up. Then we've got four copies of Paw Patch Recruit, which is a 2-1 trample for one green mana with Offspring 2. So you can pay an extra two mana when you cast this to create another copy of it, which is a 1-1 trample, which has the same effect, which is whenever a creature you control becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control other than that creature. So basically, if they kill one of your creatures, then you get a trigger that you can put a plus one plus one counter on another creature if you have another creature. So very, very nice. Um, early aggressive creature also can create tokens, which is great. Um, so it's nice to, to kind of go wide and then also kind of help against removal. Then we have one copy of Skrelv. I just like this kind of effect here in these decks just to help give us another angle of attack to allow us to push through the final couple points. Um, Skrelv is a 1-1 one, one toxic 1 for 1 white, and then can't block, and then you can use either white or Phyrexian mana, so pay 2 life, to choose a color, and then another target creature you control gains toxic 1 and hexproof from that color until end of turn. It can't be blocked by creatures of that color this turn. So this is really helpful to just kind of protect your creatures and then also push through the last couple points. Four copies of Season Warren Guard. <clears throat> This kind of rounds out the one drops here, which is a one two rabbit warrior for one white. And then when season Warren guard attacks while you control a token, it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. So this is really good when you have um, paw patch recruits where you're able to make a token there. You've got a couple other token generators. So just another solid one drop here. For our two drops, we have three copies of Phineas H. Ar Ace Archer, which is a legendary rabbit archer which is a 2-2 Vigilance Reach for one green and one white. And then whenever Phineas Ace Archer attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control that's a token or a rabbit. And then if you have uh, creatures that you control have a total power of 10 or greater, you draw a card. So this is really powerful, super big enabler. You basically try to play this on turn two and then you could go like turn three, make a bunch of tokens, attack, get a bunch of one one counters, draw a card. This card is ridiculous in this deck. Uh, four copies of Burrowguard Mentor. So this is basically the uh, the Regal Bunicorn, except it has Trample. And it's uh, one white, one green, star, star, trample. And then its power and toughness is each equal to the number of creatures you control. So this gets huge very quickly. Four copies of Valley Quest Caller, which is a one white and one other two, three rabbit warrior, and then whenever one or more other rabbits, bats, birds, and or mice you control enter, scry one. 
and other rabbits, bats, birds, and mice you control get plus one plus one. So this is really good. It just pumps your whole team. <clears throat> Standard Lord, it does give you Scry, which is really nice, and it's also a 2-3. Two, three. That 3 toughness is really nice. In addition, it also randomly gives plus one plus one to bats, which is relevant because we're running Sanguine Evangelist. Um, the other two drop here, we've got three copies of Case of the Gateway Express. This deck does go pretty wide, so being able to play this, and then when the center is, you choose a target creature that you don't control. Each creature you control deals one damage to that creature, and then to solve. Um, if you attack with three or more creatures in a turn, then this becomes solved, and then once it's solved, you get uh, creatures you control get plus one plus zero permanently as an enchantment. So nice way to give us a little bit of removal and also help just pump the team even more. <clears throat> For the three drops, we have four copies of Hop To It. This is fantastic card, three mana, create three one one white rabbit creature tokens. Just one of the best cards in the deck. Um, three pieces of virtual car cardboard for one card is amazing. Uh, we also have three copies of Sanguine Evangelist, which is really nice because the Lord pumps it up. Also, it is uh, one white and two other, a Vampire Cleric with Battle Cry. So when it attacks, it gets gives plus one plus zero to every other creature that's also attacking. Um, and then when Sanguine Evangelist enters or dies, create a one one black bat creature token of flying as a 2-1. So this is another really great creature. It's basically a 3-for-1 along with Hop To It. And then we also have four copies of Knight Errant of Eos. And Hop To It into Knight Errant of Eos is just really, really good. So very easy to get this going on like turn three, potentially. Um, but yeah, another great 3-for-1. It's a 4-4 four four for one white and four other human knight where you can convoke so you can reduce the casting cost by one for each creature that you tap um, and then <clears throat> white creatures can also reduce white mana so when he enters you look at the top six cards of your library and you may reveal up to two creature cards with mana value x or less from among, among them where x is the number of creatures that convoked knight errant of eos and then you put those creatures in your hand and shuffle so you can usually find two other threats with it very great creature. Um, for the land, we have a split here of, basically we can provide 17 sources of white and 15 sources of green between the mana. Um, we have the breakdown here is <clears throat> about 79% white mana, 39% green, but we do wanna have early access to green, which is why we have the ability to make up to 15 sources. Um, two copies of Thran Portal, which comes in uh, untapped unless you have uh, three or more lands already in play. Uh, and then when it comes in, you choose a basic land type, and then the Thran Portal becomes that land type, and every time you tap it, you do pay one life. So this basically just gives us even better mana. Uh, four copies of Razor Verge Thicket, <clears throat> which is a great... Um, dual land here providing green or white and comes in <coughs> comes in untapped unless you control um, already three or more lands um, four copies of brush land another great way to provide both colors of mana uh, and then also two copies of oak hollow village which is a nice new card here um, basically when you have a creature that comes in uh, that turn, you can give it a plus one plus one counter if it's a frog, rabbit, raccoon, or squirrel by tapping this land and one of other green source. So nice way to help buff your team as well. And then two copies also of Lupin Flower Village, which you can pay one white and one other to sacrifice to look for the top six cards of your library to find a bat, bird, mouse, or rabbit card and put it in your hand. So both the Ocala Village and the Lupin Flower Village do tap for green and white mana respectively, but um, they can't be used to cast non-creature spells for colored mana, so they just give you colorless mana for spells. Since we're only running seven spells in the whole deck, it doesn't seem like too big of a cost. And yeah, that's pretty much the deck. So all that said, let's go ahead and get into some games.
rank reset, so I think it took us back to gold. But uh, yeah, happy to get started here. This hand looks great. We've got all three colors of mana, or sorry, all uh, two colors of mana and three lands. Valley Might Caller is a great way to start. So we can open up here with a Oak Hollow Village and lead out with a Might Caller. Looks like we're up against probably Boros um, Token Control. And now we could go Paw Patch Recruit plus Might Caller, <clears throat> which is great. But getting Phineas Archer to start going off is pretty great too. Um, it does look like they probably have some form of burn, so maybe we do want to go a little bit wide here. We can also get more value out of Paw Patch Recruit later, so kind of unsure how I want to proceed here. I think since they've got untapped red sources, I'm probably going to double spell. So like, given that, let's go with a Mike Caller first. This is the slightly less greedy play. Now the problem with this is that we could run into, like if they have um, momentary lock or temporary lockdown, could be pretty painful. Okay, so it looks like we're up against Boros Convoke instead. But yeah, getting the Mike Collars going is still great. And I think let's grow the Recruit. I think this is going to be big enough to push through most stuff. So let's grow the Recruit a little bit. Now it prevents them from attacking. And now let's just hop to it. That'll make this a 6-6. Six, six. Nice use of our mana. Yeah, this thing gets out of control very quickly. Happy to trade here if they're open to it. Sure. And this should be pretty close to game. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, opening hand looks great. Uh, no one drop this time, but we do have good mana. A lot of stuff to do. We'll lead out here with Archer. We've got an extra copy, so if they decide to kill it, that's okay. Probably take Archer here. Okay, that's a pretty good one also. Um... Uh, Liliana is nasty. This is my home, and I don't appreciate when people touch me. <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of personal space? Okay, Mike Collar's a nice pickup.
All right, so we can go searching, see if we can find maybe some more action. And yeah, quest caller is gonna be a nice pickup here. Definitely racing. This is a nice card to pick up for a race, though. <clears throat> Happy to leave that on top. Pretty sure we're winning this race. It's going to be close, but... Yeah, I guess we lose the quest caller here. Let's see, quest caller gives us six points. I suppose maybe we get rid of the mentor. They're both, we're losing six points of power either way. This has trample though, which is nice. Hmm. This I suppose lets us scry, so maybe we lose the mentor. And the question is if we want to use the Okawa village, it would bring us down to seven. So we go, we'll drop down to five, down to one. So if they have any way of doing more damage, could matter. We have one more turn to finish them anyways. I think let's go for it. Ah, they had the hopeless nightmare. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. Oh well. Close game. Our opening hand looks great. We've got Mike Caller on one into yeah, Paw Patch plus Warren Guard. Next turn is great. can draw into land, we can get the dream and go hop to it into Night Errant, which would be great. There's the land. <clears throat> and let's pick up, uh, oh wow, good stuff here. Probably at this point, Night Errant plus Burrow Guard. Potentially have one turn before we hit Sunfall. Um, 
So I definitely want to take out the Elspeth. I um, guess this is a good turn to go for Case. But I think we want to hold everything just in case they've got board wipe. Be board wipe or no? If they have sunfall. There's the sunfall. Okay. So do we go paw patch for offspring or burgard plus paw patch? I think we do get try to get value here. Yeah, talent is really good. <clears throat> Guess they want to use Fountain Port to like draw more cards. All right. Um, so we could Paw Patch into Knight Errant, or we could go, I guess, Phineas into Knight Errant. or Burrowguard in Tonight Errant. Um, I like Phineas, even if he just dies to their 6-6. Six, six. I, I think we go Phineas here into Knight Errant. Ah, I'm, you know, actually I'm gonna go for the Paw Patch value. Okay, let's grab another Phineas backup. I guess they're not, they're not trying to turn this into a creature because they want to try to sunfall again. Okay, there's the sunfall. Now they just make two six sixes, I think. Still not pushing.
Okay, now I think we go, yeah, Mentor Evangelist here. I suppose it's, it could be worth suiciding in Phineas. Let's, um, so we've got a backup Phineas. Guess he'll just double pump here. Is that worth it? I mean, on the one hand, it can force their 6-6 six, six into play. So if they have like another board wipe. Or I suppose we could just wait. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, let's try to force it into play. Plus we draw a card, which is nice. I suppose we could have attacked actually with the Mentor also as a 7-6. And actually, yeah, uh, would have been open to trading here. So I probably should have attacked with that also. Yeah, definitely should have attacked the Mentor. Oh, Eternal Wonder. Not again! Oh, man. Uh. Nothing but Caretaker's Talents and Board Wipes. Unfortunately, got to try for the suicide here. But yeah, we've only got so many refills. Fortunately. Yeah, the real the real problem here has been Caretaker's Talent. I can't even think how many cards they drew off this card. We've got a full hand here. Yeah. That might be enough to just do it there. Because now especially they can make another copy. And they've got Archangel Elspeth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a problem. Yeah, I guess we just trade with a samurai, which sort of does nothing. Um... 
Hmm. I think we kind of have to do that, though, unfortunately. Yeah, with, with the Archangel Elspeth, this is pretty much over. They just pump the double strike guy, give it flying. Yeah. I don't think we have any outs here. Got to go for the double block blowout. With five or six cards in hand, I sure. I'm sure they've got something. gonna do it definitely a pretty nasty deck um, mono white walker is with caretaker's talent and lots of board wipes Okay, opening hand looks good. Uh, let's see. Guess let's lead out here with Skrelf. Nice to have some protection. <clears throat> So they probably take Quest Caller here, I would assume. Yeah, in that case, we'll go for Quest Caller. I think we want to go for Evangelist here. Guess we could go for like Triple Drop, but we don't have any tokens yet. Um, although we could set up for tokens with Evangelist the following turn. Be a little bit more damage output. Um, wouldn't be quite as much value. Evangelist is also nice because it keeps back their Cavern Bat, which is kind of, unless they pump it up somehow. I think let's go Evangelist here.
I think if they push with Bronco, maybe we just block with Evangelist just to get another bat. Since we've got Scrub, I'm less worried about Paw Patch Recruit. I think we just go Mentor, probably plus Warren Guard. And then I don't think we attack on the ground. We don't want to just give them back their Dread Knight. Not yet. Okawa was actually decent here. Um, yeah, it's not bad. I think we can do a little better, maybe. That looks pretty good. And then I think we'll just sit. Swing and a miss. Okay, Innkeeper's Talent is a problem, because now they're going to start buffing up their Deep Cavern Bat. Hop 2, it definitely gives us the most power with Mentor. There's a argument for Paw Patch Recruit. So they've only got two cards in hand. Yeah, maybe let's just go hop to it here. Don't need that. Actually, should we attack with Evangelist here? Because we could wait until next turn to get a little bit more damage in. I assume they're going to block with Dread Knight. Um, yeah, this is still decent. That's a nice pickup also. So unless they have like Gix's command, we're looking pretty good here. Yeah, that should do it.
Okay, opening hand looks great. We've got uh, two land, good stuff to do. We'll lead out here with Mike Callers. It's our best one drop. Into hopefully Phineas next turn. Although Mike Caller plus Warren Guard is pretty good too. Yeah, and if they've got removal, I think the double spells is just kind of too good to ignore. Now we can play Phineas and then set up for Knight Errant potentially. Uh, do we Knight Errant here or do we just push and potentially draw. I think we push actually, because we're gonna still draw a card here. We'll have, let's see, two, three, five. What is that? Nine, yeah, we'll have 10 power. Think of the triggers stack, right? Yeah. Um, let's just put the counters over here, I guess. Yeah, that's gonna do it for sure. Nice. All right, so we ended up going three and two. Pretty happy with the deck, it's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, thanks guys for watching, and we will see you in the next one.